What's the main message of the Bible? Stories, after all, have a point. That's what we'll look into today on The Bible Brief. So we've sprinted through the Bible, and before we start our run-through in the next episode, we're going to take a breather. While we catch our breath, we're going to look at what the story of the Bible communicates. It's a big story that's not meant to merely be entertaining, but it's also meant to tell us something. It has a message. The main message of the Bible includes three basic elements. One, humans have a sin problem. Two, God is the only possible solution to the sin problem. And three, faith is the necessary bridge between God and mankind. So let's briefly look into the three basic elements of the main Bible message. First, humans have a sin problem. Starting back with Adam and Eve in the garden, we see the first human sin against God. Rather than follow God's rule, they disobey God and eat fruit from the forbidden tree. Due to this, the nature of humanity is corrupted. There is now an inclination or a bent towards sin that exists in all of humanity. Eventually, for every person descended from Adam, this inclination towards sin becomes realization of actual sin. Maybe it's lying to your parents about what you did last night. Maybe it's cheating on a test or on your taxes. Maybe it's gossiping about a so-called friend. Whatever it is, this sin in my life and yours finds its root in the first sin of Adam and Eve. With our natures corrupted, we all turn away from God in sin. Listener, consider for a moment how this has worked out in your life. You have felt this inclination towards sin, and you've succumbed to it. You even felt that tug in your conscience that told you that what you were doing was wrong, yet you did it anyway. Maybe even a particular sin comes to mind. Whatever it is, it's evidence of the problem that we all have. Not only are we all bent towards sin, but we all actually do sin. And this sin separates us from God. Rather than the unity of fellowship and friendship with God, because of sin, the human problem is our distance from God. Our sin alienates us from God himself. So sin, separation, alienation are all aspects of this problem that courses through the veins of the Bible. And God himself is the only possible solution, which is our second point. I want you to recall what we said last week on the podcast when we attempted to describe God. We said, God is the all-knowing, all-powerful, unchanging, eternal spirit who's the definition of all goodness and justice. And yet God is intensely personal, even allowing us to talk with him and to walk with him. I want to add a word to our vocabulary as we think about God, and that word is holy. Holy is a word used all over the Bible to describe God, but we don't really have a good modern word that captures the meaning of the biblical descriptor. Holy means something like this, totally, completely, set apart and above, different and utterly unique. The Bible describes God as holy, and part of His holiness is a total moral righteousness and perfection. Complete and total goodness, complete and total love, complete and total purity. In contrast to this totality of perfection, this holiness, the human problem becomes even more apparent. We see a holy God and a corrupt humanity. The question is, how can a corrupt humanity become uncorrupt? How can humans fix the sin problem so that we can have unity with God rather than separation from God? Well, the Bible provides the answer. Humans can't do a thing. Rather, God himself has to do it. Let me provide an example. You've probably torn a shirt or some jeans before. And when that happened, if those clothes mattered to you, you tried to have someone repair them, like a tailor or maybe your mom. The clothes had no ability or power to fix themselves. You and I are like those clothes. Once torn, we can't fix ourselves. Rather, we need a tailor to put back together what was torn. 
But unfortunately, the problem is even more dire than that when we talk about sin. We're more like burned and torn clothes. Instead of mere fixing, we need remaking. And you know who's the only one qualified to remake a corrupt human? Well, the one who made humans in the first place, God himself. Human corruption and sin is at such a deep level that God must remake us so that we're new. This is the whole point of a famous conversation that Jesus has with a man named Nicodemus. This is in the New Testament book of John. In this conversation, Jesus talks about the necessity of being born again, which baffles Nicodemus. Nicodemus struggles to understand that this rebirth that Jesus is speaking about is accomplished at the spiritual level. God must make us new on the inside, and in that we are born again. God must make us new, and he's the only one who can even do that. Our corruption and our sin means that we need newness, not just merely fixing. Which brings us to the third point, faith. Faith is the necessary bridge between God and man. Since God is the one that must remake us and we can't remake ourselves, there must be some way for us to receive the remaking. The next logical question is, okay, well, how can that happen for me? Well, the short answer is to believe in God. That is to actually trust that he can and will make you new. And this includes believing in Jesus who paved the way for our remaking. Remember in our last episode, we said that Jesus died for the sins of the world. He took on the spiritual death penalty and separation that each of us deserves because of our own sin. And because of him dying for our sin, when we believe in Jesus, we can become part of a spiritual transaction of sorts. The Bible says that in some way, despite not being a sinner himself, Jesus became sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the transaction. Let me put it another way. Jesus took your sin so that you could take his righteousness when you believe in him. Jesus took the death penalty that we deserve for our sin, and in exchange, he gives us his perfect, sinless righteousness. We believe in Jesus, and in doing so, God gives us the holiness of himself. Said another way, God makes us holy, able now to have fellowship and relationship with Him. And this holiness is achieved through the Holy Spirit that Jesus announced that He would send to His followers. Remember that from the last episode? Jesus sends the Holy Spirit to come into believers, and in doing that, He remakes them on the inside. The Bible says this, If anyone is in Christ, a way to describe believers, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and see, the new has come. Don't miss this point. Believing in Jesus opens the door for God to remake us from the inside out, replacing the corruption of sin with the holiness of God. God makes us holy like he is holy, and he does this by living in us by the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit works in the life of the believer, He or she looks more and more like God, more and more like Jesus. And faith is the bridge over which God comes and makes us new. This whole process of saving humans is a gracious gift from God, not a gift that we deserve, but a gift rooted in the goodness and love of God for the world. Now, we went over a lot in this episode, but again, this is the corest of the core of the Bible message. We will explain more of these concepts as we continue to explore the Bible story, but I want to ensure that you're left with the three basic elements of the message. Humans have a sin problem. God is the only possible solution to the sin problem. And faith is the necessary bridge between God and humans. As we begin our run through the Bible in the next episode, I want you to keep your eye out for this basic message. We're going to get very familiar with the sin problem the holiness of God, and the faith that God uses to make us new. Now that we've had our breather from our sprint, are you ready to start the run-through? See you next time on The Bible Brief. The Bible Brief is brought to you by the Bible Literacy Foundation. 
dedicated to helping people like you learn the Bible. Do you have a question about the Bible? It could be featured on a future show. You can submit a question by going to our website, BibleLiteracyFoundation.com, and clicking on the podcast page. There you can submit a text or audio question. We'd love to hear from you. Copyright Bible Literacy Foundation 2022.